Okay, wow, I hope you got surprises Ooh. for you, things you didn't know. Look at that. Ooh. So this is Likeable Science. It's actually Likeable Science on Wednesday <laughs> with, with Ethan Allen and me. He's the host guest and I'm the guest host. And we're going to work this out. And we, we keep spotting these really interesting things that come around in the MIT newsletter and some of the others, the Flipboard newsletter on technology. There's a lot of stuff on the web. Uh, that opens your eyes and makes you wonder why you didn't catch that before. So <clears throat> this, is, this has actually been in the news a, a couple of times in the last day or so. Uh, so this is not, you know, a, a, a scoop or anything, but something remarkable happened uh, with uh, Google, not Amazon, right, right. Google, and deliveries on drone deliveries. Right. What happened? So their company wings, basically, or wing, uh, got it's commercial permit, basically, to, to deliver goods via drone, have goods flown in locally, and, and to actually open a business where it does this, it delivers goods from businesses to homes you know, on a commercial basis. It's starting out, I guess, just in a couple places in Virginia. They don't even write, really identify what, what suburb is of Charlottesville and uh, Blacksburg or something that it's operating in, but... It's apparently gotten underway. They've, they've tested this in Australia. And it's, but, yeah, they did. Uh, they did uh, a test, a test uh, version of it in Australia, right. and they had like three thousand drone runs, right. and it worked good. Right. So they decided to approach the FAA right. for approval to do it in the U.S. Right. And the FAA gave them approval. That's the news piece. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, and apparently there's, there's restrictions. The drones are supposed to stay below 400 feet, I think. They can't fly at night. They've got to have, it's, they can only fly when it's clear weather. Um, and you know, I mean, sooner or later, there's going to be accidents. So a plane taking off or landing or coming low is going to turn into a drone. And, yeah, you worry about the, the accidents that might happen. But helicopters can't come lower than 500 feet. So this gives a 100-foot right. margin. That's a 25% mar right. margin. So. Um, it's not likely the helicopters are going to stumble into them. Besides, a helicopter would win that battle. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just cannot envision exactly how this works because it's out of science fiction. Well, but, but the beautiful thing is, as I said, it's, it's a very interesting trend now, right? We've been all shifting our buying habits and buying more and more stuff from Amazon because you, you can click on your computer, buy it, and it's there within a few days, right? <clears throat> you don't have to go out and get it from your local store and stand in line. Now, all the local stores will be able to start offering that same kind of service. It's a democratization yeah, exactly. of the Amazon leverage. Yeah, exactly. you're right. So, and either Amazon will have to start setting up more and more headquarters in different places, uh, or else the local stores will gain their advantage, will gain an advantage back or some ground yeah. back. I'm sure Amazon will be on Google's tail on this because they want to do it too. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, it strikes me that the local store, the, you know, the mom and pop mm -hmm. store, small store, um, they're going to want the technology, the, the, you know, the best technology they can get, mm -hmm. the fastest, the safest, all that. Mm -hmm. um, where are they going to go? They're going to go to Google or Amazon, and they're going to have to pay Google or Amazon uh, for that technology. And, then, and that technology could be, you know, the, the drone, it could be the software, mm -hmm. or, you know what? It could be the delivery system in general. Right. So, they, you know, they could lend them, uh, say, Google, you know, uh, leases, right. drone equipment and software to a given mom and pop, and, uh, right. and then the mom and pop run it. Right. Or alternatively, Google can say, look, you want something droned? Right. Uh, press the button on this page. Right. Okay, and we'll send some, we'll send a drone over right to, away. To and you load new. it up and right. Right. we'll new. take care of it. Yeah. You know, so this is not as if, they're giving it away. <laughs> no, no, oh, they're going to make money off it. Well, you, you can bet. <clears throat> now, the nice, the nice thing is, basically, these drones, being relatively small, are emitting less uh, pollution than would a car or truck on the road going out to make that same delivery. Um, although, arguably... Uh, the batteries. Yeah, they're, they're Lithium right. or something is, takes a lot, of, a lot right. of carbon and puts a lot of now, toxins in, back in... The there planet. are going to be some... some Issues to, to deal with here, yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, those batteries will get better. They're good enough now right. to be used commercially. Right. Uh, you know, back a day, uh, maybe only two, three years ago, a drone could get across the field and mm -hmm. would run out of gas. Mm -hmm. Now, apparently, uh, there's much better ways to do it. And furthermore, you got charging station 
kind of recharge. Mm -hmm. So the drone comes back, it flies by itself into the charging station, charges up, and it's ready for the next delivery. Right. And the owner of the store, has, you know, he doesn't have to think about it because right. it's ready. This is what I suspect the model will be, is that there'll be a central or drone service that will be the intermediate between the business and the customer. And basically, yeah. that way the, the business doesn't really have to worry about it other than somebody has to step outside and sort of hold a package while the drone grabs it and takes it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's true. You know, and, and when you say that, it, it evokes in my mind, um, so I was saying that uh, Google or Amazon or whoever, one of the big guys enters the field, they might, um, you know, lease or, you know, provide a service to the store to deliver to the customer, okay? mm -hmm. or even to the customer. This has yet to be worked out. But what about those young, sprightly entrepreneurs who say, we will be drone central. We will be your drone delivery service. Mm -hmm. We will invest in the equipment. We will mm -hmm. work the software. We will cause the delivery. Mm -hmm. And you and mom and pop, all you have to do is call us. Right. We're not Amazon. We're not Google. We're just, um, you know, think tech drones. Yeah, it, it, it's a wild west. Thing it is. Out there, you, know? you have to invent and, and, yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah and, and people, I'm sure, are thinking like that as, as we speak. I'm sure there are groups thinking, can we do this for some mid-sized city to make that work? You know, uh, it's happening. Yeah. It's really, you know, and as far, if you're a technology nut, this is really beautiful. Right. And it's a, it's a disruptive thing. It means all of a sudden, drones were pie in the sky. Bezos figured it out. Mm -hmm. Remember what, about five years ago? Right, right. Um, it was pie in the sky. Now it's a reality. I, I still can't imagine. You'll have to help me on this. So the drone is at the drone charging station, which is like on the roof of the store, maybe, or mm -hmm. behind the store, or, you know, a place where you know, it, it, the drones can get mm -hmm. charged, okay? The store loads up the thing, whatever it is, food or devices mm -hmm. or anything, shoes, you know, mm -hmm. uh, clothing, and they, they're, they're strong enough to carry things, right. okay? And it, and it punches in the address. Right. Okay, now, the drone is ready to go. Mm -hmm. How does the drone, I mean, it has to stay under 400 feet, mm -hmm. okay? What does it do? Does it fly down the street? Does it, you know, fly oh. over the cars, between the buildings? Um, what, how does it navigate? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm sure, again, it's got, it's basically got the same kind of GPS that our phones have, right? Although probably more sophisticated, but I suspect, no, I suspect it goes up, sort of up to some altitude, just shy of 400 feet, takes a straight line, boom, goes right down. Okay, so why, it's why, navigating. Why, why should it? Just in turn, I mean, that's yeah, right. wasting time, you know. Well, it's watching for buildings. It right. does, well, you know, buildings more than 400. Right. It, 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 it wants to avoid a collision because that's sure. the end of the drone and probably, you know, right. the FAA is not going to like seeing that. Right. And then furthermore, you have a lot of drones. And there's a question in the right. article that came around. Right. How, was it the how MIT? Count that, the number. Yeah, huh? How many can you have before right. they get crazy? But <clears throat> right now, even though they're not crazy, even though there's just a handful, they must have systems uh, for avoiding other drones, right. right? So it's not just avoiding buildings, right. you avoid other drones. And if, if a drone is flying at, I don't know, what do they fly, 60 miles an hour maybe? Mm -hmm. And another one's flying at 60 miles an hour, mm -hmm. well that's 120 miles right. an hour, the drone has to be quick enough to avoid a collision right. with any number of other drones. Right, right, as well as birds. Birds. You know. <laughs> flying yeah. objects, right. whatever they may be. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, there's so, we haven't realized it, but this must be already very sophisticated. Oh, you wow. know, in Australia and now here, people have high expectations for accident avoidance. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> this, this, so what this tells me is the technology has gone a long way since we last looked, um, mm -hmm. and the technology is ready for prime time. Otherwise, we wouldn't have got the FAA approval. Yeah. Everything's going to change. Now. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see because just a few years ago, the majority of people interviewed did not want drones basically flying near their homes. Uh, there was like a, a majority of people really objected to that. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that's changing, you know. You remember that uh, YouTube clip that was going around, and this can't be five years ago, maybe three or four years ago, and it was about a guy who had a, a little store on the side of a fishing lake, and the fishing lake was all frozen, and he, he delivered beer, Using a drone, the huh. drone <laughs> go to coordinates of a you know a fishing hole, huh. fishing cabin, <laughs> uh, on the frozen lake. <laughs> huh. 
you know, a six pack. Uh -huh. Would go and it would drop it off, and the fellow fishing would have his beer, and then the drone would go back. And uh, the FAA didn't like that because that wasn't licensed at the time. Ah, okay. But now, right. it's different. Right. Now that can happen. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> great stuff. Okay, all right. This one, that was great prospect. We should follow that because, you know, that you can tell that the human condition now demands it right. and that commerce now demands it. So we'll be yeah. hearing a lot more about this. Exactly, now. exactly. Okay, what do we got for a second story, Ethan? So we uh, also were reading about uh, another uh, sort of uh, amazing technology jump, the uh, much different area, but urine tests, right? People don't like to go in and do urine tests, right? It's no fun. It's, it's inconvenient. You go, have to go wait in the doctor's office, send you off into a little bathroom, da 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 da, da. you got pee in a cup. You know what? I mean, let me digress for a moment and say that uh, if you had a, a specimen, of some kind, you know, body fluids, what have you, uh, for medical evaluation. Um, you the you can send them in a drone. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm going to say? <laughs> Apparently, they're actually already doing that in some, er in some areas. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But, but this, this is a, an interesting thing because they now have fairly sophisticated but simple uh, little, little pee strips, you know, that, that will check for a number of different diseases as well as pregnancy. Uh, the presence of certain compounds, for instance, uh, illicit drugs or whatever in, in your system, can do multiple tests on a little single strip. It's a colorimetric business. So now somebody basically figured out that if you get a standardized background sheet and give people that, and they can just put their P strip on their standardized background, take a picture of it, and the picture is uploaded to software that looks at it and says, yeah, yeah, we think this. It was on this kind of phone, under this kind of lighting condition, therefore this reading means, and it gives a diagnosis right away. Is the, is the phone making the diagnosis no. or just sending the picture? I think it's just sending the picture to, to some software that lives up in the cloud somewhere that does that. But so it would have to be a very uh, accurate picture, it has to be a high resolution picture. Right. But again, I think, I think there's AI behind this, so it just sort of learns all the time and, and it knows what brand of phone was sending the picture. And it probably learns about lighting conditions and yeah. And, and the thing is that because basically even in their tests now they've gotten very high compliance rates from people who are told you know you should do your analysis regularly for whatever your incipient condition is and they don't like to do it and they have a very low compliance rate 20 30 percent maybe if they're lucky with this kind of business that they've they've been tested they've been little test runs gotten about 70 percent compliance from these patients. When it's a matter of just all, this is you know, so I'm, easy. I'm just at home now. Yeah, I can I can do this in two minutes. You know, no fuss, no muss. Uh -huh. Well, the jury has some questions. Okay, here's some questions. Um, you said it's a standardized P strip. Mm -hmm. Okay, and presumably you pee on it, uh, and then you put it down on a surface. Take the camera. The camera has some enhanced type. I mean, the phone is some enhanced camera that takes a really accurate picture, and then you just send that back. Maybe mm -hmm. that could be in the app. Maybe it is in the mm -hmm. app. So you take the picture, the thing automatically sends it to your favorite laboratory, which, which is actually an AI laboratory. Right. And the AI laboratory is matching it, as AI does, against results um, of other cases. Where millions of other cases. Billions of other <laughs> cases and, and making diagnoses. Right. Okay. But you said it was a, 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 a maybe there's technologies on the beginning here. But it was a multi-purpose P-strip, mm -hmm. and it could handle a certain number of issues, if you will, right. diseases, con right. conditions. Right. Um, but it can't handle everything. There is a million things that could happen sure. in your P sure. um, that could tell you a million things about yourself. I mean, including really, in, in, you know, an enormous percentage of all the health issues in the world could be identified in your P. And if it isn't now, it will be. Right. You know? So how can you make a P-strip that has all those tests built into it? Well, that's, I mean, that is the amazing thing, is it used to be they were all sort of single purpose. There might be one for a pregnancy test, and there might be one for this test, and one for that test. And now they'll do just tiny little bands on the same strip, basically, with different chemicals or structures, little nanoscale structures on them that, that will change in certain ways in the presence or absence of certain kind of indicators. You know? certain proteins, certain metabolites, 
Uh, so yeah, it's yeah. so that, that I mean that end of the technology is growing very rapidly and maturing very rapidly too. That detection, that sensor end. You know. So it's really it's a it's a strip that uh, reveals the um, chemical composition of the pea rather than c coming up with a diagnosis about the pea. Um, right, right. The, the strip is just it, it's a not a smart strip. Uh, it's just it's just looking at, and different bands or spots on it are picking up different aspects of what, what's there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, presumably the, the AI behind it wants everyone to be using the same strip. You know, so that, right, well, otherwise it's... Right, otherwise it's it, it very complicated, yeah. I mean, it strikes me, though, that if you had a bladder infection or something, um, this, the P strip is not going to be... It doesn't have a strip to say, oh, this is, you know, this is for bacteria... Uh, for a bladder infection. Uh, well, it probably does. I suspect they well, do. Well, I was thinking that it would have a strip for the kinds of chemical compounds you would find in, in the pea that would suggest, you know, or confirm uh, the presence of, uh, you know, a, a, an antigen infection agent. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be looking for the actual microbe. No. Looking for the chemical for, elements for, of the microbe. Some, yeah? yeah, some yeah. signature of it, yeah. Signature, yeah. yeah, 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 but that, yeah. That, that's very much what they're doing. And the great thing is, because they can get these higher compliance rates now, they can spot incipient disease states earlier. And you know, there are something, as this article said, I mean, there are something like, what, 30,000 people in the US. In the US alone, 30 million adults are, are affected by sort of uh, di diabetes or pre-diabetes oh, diabetes, yeah. conditions. You should be a diabetic, diabetic condition from your pea strip right. without having an invasive needle, sti needle stick. Right. right, and then you can, you can take corrective action before this becomes very serious. Well, maybe some you, of this is a, a self-diagnosis because, right. so, okay, you take, the, by the way, the pea strip isn't going to be bigger than your cell phone, right? right. It's not right. going to be this long. <laughs> it's going to be like three or four inches right. long. I was going to put it on the table and take a picture. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, so you send it in to a company, which is not necessarily a diagnostic laboratory company. It's a software company, right? right. right? And it has, this is like uh, Ancestry.com. And now it <laughs> sends you back a report. Right. Well, you know, it's, this isn't a secret between that company and the doctor. If there is a doctor at this point, <laughs> may not be. Yeah, I don't, you know? I don't, I don't know. I mean, it, you say it isn't diagnostic lab and it is in some odd way it is though exactly. yeah yeah yeah, you know, it's, yeah. Very, it's it's odd how the lines are blurring now right yeah right the uh, line is blurring. it's not not a fancy lab with chemical reagents and everything all that's built into the p-strip all this is is ai looking at it literally comparing your result against 10 million other results and basically saying we think there's a 97.6 percent chance that this is you know this condition and a 47.8 percent chance that it's another condition you know and that, and that sounds a lot like Ancestry.com. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so now it comes back to you and says, uh, you know, Ethan, is a 97% chance you got this, right? right? And that, and the other thing, you know, it's going to evaluate a number of conditions right. and give you a percentage. And, right. and then it's going to take all those conditions and put them together and give you a, you know, like a landscape of how mm -hmm. your health is. Okay, so at that point, it's up to you because this is between you and you up to this point. Um, and you can say, hmm, 97% of it, I got a condition, I think I better go see my doctor. Right. You don't have to. You can suffer. <laughs> or you could go see your doctor and say, look, I got the 90, 97%. Right. You better take a look at this. Right. So it, it's a tip-off, right? Right. It's a, it's a direct, and it's probably not as scary as some of these other tests, right. which tell you, you know, it could have false positives on them. This way, it'll, it'll be more sophisticated than that. Well, I'm sure, again, there are, there are rates of both false positives and false negatives, but they are hopefully very small. That's their aim with these things always is to make them as good as a standard lab test, you know. Uh, and once they do that, again, just like the previous thing, it's democratizing the whole process. You bet. It, it's putting this fancy technology in the reach of pretty much anyone with a smartphone. It would know? cost a dollar half, you know. It would be really cheap. Right. And if, you know, uh, 300 million people used it, it would be... Right. You know, a dollar and a quarter. Right. You know? But a couple of things come to mind. Number one is, um, you know, I, I mentioned Ancestry.com. Well, you've got swabs mm -hmm. in your mouth. Uh, have a piece of DNA. Um, now, that's on a swab, and you send the swab in, and they have a way of getting your DNA off the swab. Mm -hmm. But if we could figure mechanically how to get that DNA from your mouth 
you know, mm -hmm. onto a P-strip kind of device and have your phone read that, sure. you can have Ancestry.com um, with respect to yeah. not only Ancestry, but diseases and, right. and uh, you know, in, you know uh, uh, predictions of disease. Right. Um, right there on your phone, you tell a lot more than just a P strip. No? And, I, and I'm, I am guessing there are probably a thousand labs around the world working on almost precisely that issue right now, as you speak. I'm, I'm just, just guess off the top of my head, but, but I'm betting that, because, yeah, that, that's, it's, it's, has such potential again to, to be a great diagnostic tool as well as a, a has, has a lot of appeal to a lot of people, you know. Now I'm thinking of blood, right? Mm -hmm. um, and as, as what do you call it? Um, the, the, the fluid, the fluid that goes with blood. Um, Plasma. Yeah, whatever. I mean, yeah. serum. 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 Right. Um, okay, you know, you could do the same kind of thing with that. You'd have to get the blood on some kind of piece strip affair, mm -hmm. so the camera, the phone could take mm -hmm. a picture of it. And you know, use the same kind mm -hmm. of uh, AI type analysis. The problem there is that to get blood, it's it's invasive. You're going to have to go stick yourself, right? Uh, yeah. Which people hate to do. Right. It's you know, it detracts from the whole thing. Right. And I'm wondering uh, what you think about the possibility. A is that if we do the P strip well enough from P, mm -hmm. we don't need blood. Is mm -hmm. it possible? That's a really hard medical question. Yeah, or I mean, can, can the, we, there, get, will we absolutely need blood to make certain the, diagnoses. There are more things every day that are being discovered that you can analyze from either pee or sweat, in some cases, or saliva. Uh, so non-invasive ways of getting bodily fluids. Uh, it's being found more and more. There are markers for a lot of things in all those fluids. Yeah. The question is, yeah, can you can we develop the technology to spot those markers reliably? Flag them unambiguously. Uh, yeah, uh, and there's no reason we can't. I mean, realistically. Uh, then, then of course I'm thinking of skin. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, uh, you could you could look at skin mm -hmm. with a camera, I think, and learn a lot about the skin. Anyway, mm -hmm. that's not going to necessarily tell you what's under the skin, mm -hmm. but the skin and you know a few cell layers into the skin, you could do that. I think. Mm -hmm. um, alternatively, you could have a some kind of device that will microscopically peel off a layer of skin that you wouldn't even know it was gone because it's, you know, mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just one cell thick or something. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's, that might help you a little bit in determining, you know, things you need skin to determine. Mm -hmm. And finally, the next one that strikes me is that, you know, these vaccination machines, that's a whole new subject, vaccination. It's in the press all the time oh, yeah. now. Oh. Um, Don't get me started about it. The vaccination <laughs> machines where, you, where the kid comes up and you vaccinate him by a, like a puff of high, highly charged air, mm -hmm. you know, and the drug is, or the, uh, vac the vaccine is in, the, is in that highly charged puff of air, mm -hmm. and it enters into his body. Mm -hmm. it, through his skin, it's shot, you know, between the cells in some way. Mm -hmm. it just, it's invasive, and he really, he feels the puff of air, but not more than that. Mm -hmm. So why can't that be in reverse? Why can't that be a reverse puff of air where, <laughs> where you can get a little blood out ah, okay, by reversing that process? What do you think? That would be interesting. It's not invasive. Right, right. It would be interesting to, to have something that could draw, could draw blood uh, relatively painlessly and without a puncture wound. Uh, again, no reason that couldn't be done, I suspect. It would mean... Probably a little harder, just that you have to get a, a good seal and then a pretty high vacuum developed really quickly. Uh, but if, if you did that, yeah, there's no reason you couldn't pop a, a little droplet of blood out and, and suck that right up. Uh, yeah. Now that, then, then there were these physical, these physical um, manifestations of health. I mean, physical processes, for example, respiration, mm -hmm. uh, temperature, mm -hmm. uh, blood pressure, those three things. Right. And, is taken in every medical context sure. around the world. Right. It? It's your vital signs. Mm -hmm. right? Okay. Um, now, Quicken, or rather, uh, Oceanet, Oceanet, across the street mm -hmm. uh, here downtown, invented a, a, a blanket uh, for use in hospitals, which could take your temperature. Just lie down on the blanket, it could take your temperature. Uh -huh. um, and it could measure your respiration, mm -hmm. you know, the movement of the, the, sure. the blanket. 
<clears throat> and that was pretty good. Right. I, I'm not sure how widely it's been distributed, but I thought it was a pretty good idea. Um, and then the, where they got stuck, and I don't know if they have solved the problem, is on blood pressure, because on mm -hmm. blood pressure, you really have to have a cuff on mm -hmm. uh, in order to determine bl blood pressure. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, these days, you can go to, you can go to any number of places. I mean, they, mm -hmm. you've got many models on Amazon about blood pressure cuffs right. that will give you an ac accurate, medically accepted reading of mm -hmm. your blood pressure. And again, that technology is developing, and fairly soon, it'll, you'll be able to have a little wristwatch size thing that you wear, and it'll automatically tell you if your blood pressure is changing in some way that's potentially unhealthy, you know? Yeah, so I mean, you could have this little wee cuff, little wee mm -hmm. cuff um, on your wrist, and it could tell you blood pressure, right. it could tell you pulse, right. it could tell you temperature, sure. right. and it could tell you respiration, and, maybe. And it could be sampling your sweat all the time, too. For, Thank you very much, because right, right. sweat is part of it. Right, so it okay. becomes your own little health monitor, basically. Health right. monitor. For 24 yeah. hours a day, seven days a week, it's sitting there monitoring your health, feeding all the state up in the cloud. In the cloud, uh, on which, the way to the AI company. Which, which is right which is feeding suggestions back about how you might want to change your diet or get more exercise or... Or whether you have a disease. If you fit right. into a, an AI pattern right. of uh, these various factors, sure. uh, yeah. you know, incidentally, Jay, it comes on my phone, incidentally, Jay, you're having a heart attack. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I hope you do something about that really soon. Right. <laughs> but you could, you could match that up, that little band, mm -hmm. okay, with uh, the, P, uh, right. the, the P thing. Right. And, uh, and then you could maybe take a look at the skin, or maybe mm -hmm. the band could take a look right. at the skin. Yeah, exactly. Perspiration right. and skin cell, who knows? Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't think it'd be a big problem to develop this. Um, and also, you know, if you could get blood, that would be good. Right. Um, and so um, all of that considered, you know pretty much what any doctor knows <laughs> <laughs> when you come into his office, and the AI guys can make not only one right. diagnosis, but many diagnoses, and a, a whole health picture diagnosis, plus a prognostication of how you're doing in this it, life. Exactly, and really then tell you, yes, it is time for you to go see a doctor now, or no, don't worry that you're feeling bad right now, it's really nothing serious. You know, you'll get over it in a few hours, you know. Yeah, try and, that and see how many and, lawsuits you get. <laughs> 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 I'm sure this is, this is not, you know, not yet over the legal hump. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, all these things have, have uh, are going to get the attorneys involved. You, you know, the drones are, uh, the, these tests are, uh, everything, even the... the uh, okay, we got one more item. Right. So let me ask the engineer. We got, we got a, a couple of minutes more to discuss the third item. He says yes. Okay. <laughs> so facial recognition. Okay. Boom, here's another one that AI plays a huge role in, right? You, you get a picture of your face, you compare it to a database. For instance, Hawaii has everyone, all Hawaii driving and, and all Hawaii residents faces on a file somewhere, you know, and, and so there's no reason you can't tap into that database in theory and compare the picture you just take of some person on the street and instantly find out who that is. The um, operative piece being the street is fair game. Right. The street is the public thoroughfare, and just like the government can take pictures as much as it wants on the street, so you can, yes. I think. I mean, I don't think it's a privacy issue there. Yeah, that's, a, that's the thing. The, the law has not caught up with this issue yet and, yeah. and has not said, it, is it un, unreasonable search and seizure or unreasonable invasion of your privacy to have your picture taken and compared to some database and identif be identified? Huh? Well, I've, I've seen some of the, you know, the work, so to speak, that recognition does. Mm -hmm. And you could have a side shot. Mm -hmm. You could have a shot only part of the face. Mm -hmm. Um, you could have a side shot at night um, in bad light or too much light. Um, you could have a side shot uh, from the way high, you know, overhead or down mm -hmm. below. And that stuff will still find you. Right, right. It's amazing. It, it sort of remodels your face into an acceptable configuration to be read by AI. Right. Yeah, and even with public databases then, you can find a match for that face. That's, so that was the story. These people just set up some security cameras hooked into some of these public databases, and pretty soon were able to say, ah, hey, there's Dr. So-and-so is go going into and out of his office here, and boom, you know. I mean, they knew this, even though they had no clue as to who this was, they, they were able to figure out who it was. And, that, yeah. That's the privacy issue right. there. 
you know, for AI, you have to have millions and millions of faces. You know, in AI, it's not, not one picture you're comparing it against. You're looking for a match of many pictures. All, mm -hmm. all of them have some resemblance to this face. Right. And so you've got to have all those pictures. You've got to get all those pictures. Somebody has a big picture bank somewhere. I mean, when I say big, I mean millions and millions and millions of pictures right. of millions of people. Um, that's the way it works best mm -hmm. uh, or at all. And so we're going to get that from. Who has that? Right. The person who's been collecting those pictures right. probably violated somebody's, somebody's privacy. Don't you think? Yeah, uh, this, this article points out that in China, there is a uh, surveillance camera for every seven people. <laughs> so, I mean, you, you presumably can't really walk down the street in any major <laughs> Chinese city without being immediately flagged and captured. And Including just, small children. <laughs> pretty soon stuck, stuck into a database. Uh, yeah. You, you know that they'll, they'll get the guest name, they'll figure out if, which hotel you came out of, be able to pluck your registration out, all the details you had to provide to the hotel. Which yeah, that's the hard part. So you get a picture of somebody in the street, right. no big deal. Now you got to find out who that is so you can identify them when there's a match. Right. Um, and maybe, you know, hotel records where you just walked out of the hotel, but it's hard. You have to have a, you know, a sort of a plenary system mm -hmm. about everything that's happening in the in the neighborhood to figure it out who he is. And if you, if you don't know who he is, all you can say is, well, he looks like this guy, but that doesn't help you get where you need to go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but. but now the $60, that's what I'm interested in. So some, some guy in, what, New York? Right. Decided he wanted, to, he wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. He wanted to make a facial recognition system mm -hmm. just for fun. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to do it for $60. Right. How did he do that? I, I confess I did not read that particular article, but I mean, again, these surveillance cameras have just gotten so cheap. Camera now. was the cheapest part. It, yeah, okay. and then again, I don't know if you have to buy a, a you know buy into a service that has some some Maybe that, so. that is searching the service public, with the photos. That's searching, yeah, searches a lot of fo photos, public photo databases, and yeah, yeah just it's, it's. You may not even need software right. on your machine. Right. All you need is the picture or the part picture of the person you're looking at. Again, it's sort of like the, the urine test we were just talking about, right? All you're doing is capturing some data, digitizing it properly, and sending it off to somebody else to compare to, against a billion other results of a similar sort of thing. And, and you know, and the, the AI will give you within certain parameters how close you are and to, to making a hit, you know, a match. Yeah. You know? And then you have cell phones, right? who can recognize, you know, a database you give it, but mm -hmm. can also take pictures, good pictures, of people in a crowd, at a party, what mm -hmm. have you, um, you know, that you don't know, and mm -hmm. you want to know, you want to know. Mm -hmm. You want this person identified, send it in, and the AI will send you back a report on who it is. You know? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's and it's, uh, you recall, uh, what, a month or so ago, a couple months ago, there was the issue with FaceTime, a little bug in FaceTime that, FaceTime could be activated by a remote user, so your FaceTime turns on without you knowing about it. And they can, FaceTime could start listening in and watching you, basically. No uh, surprise. It, yeah, I mean, so, again, think about that kind of issue uh, with what we're talking about here, yeah. And, and you begin to, to see the power of this information to yeah. be misused, certainly. Yeah, you but... turns ought to get out and do something about this. Well, I mean, to, to, to pour fuel on the fire, or when, when this company, whether it's a big company or a little company, is uh, responding to you and saying, oh, that's Ethan Allen's face, you know, and here's some stuff about Ethan Allen, it's keeping a record of the fact that you asked. Mm -hmm. It's keeping a record of what it gives you, mm -hmm. because everything is on the record, everything. Right. And the remarkable thing about databases, I don't think people understand relational databases, all this stuff is connected. Right. All this stuff is effectively infinite in its ability to remember and recall things. And so your whole life is a composite right. of all these data points on all these different things, and right. somewhere they all come together, probably at NSA. Yeah, I mean, the, the power now of sophisticated software to look and search multiple databases in, that were originally designed to pick up all kinds of different information, not related in the least to one another, the power to integrate that stuff now is, is growing by leaps and bounds yeah. in, in, in really interesting ways, but yeah. certainly potentially frightening. I'm sure the ACLU is well, you it's, know, it's paying a lot of attention. It's got a big job it. ahead of yeah. it. Right. Meanwhile, Xi Jinping is developing, or has already developed, a social quotient mm -hmm. where it knows everything you've done and it assigns a social quotient of 
how good a person you are and whether you should get to ride the train or the plane or, right. or qualify for a loan, whatever it is. Yeah. And so, you know, it's, it's inevitable, okay, that that's going to be bigger and better and more sophisticated. It's going to govern the way people conduct themselves. They want to have a bad quotient. But the other thing I suggest to you is that it's also inevitable that our country, okay, with all the data it collects on everybody, is going to go in kind of the same direction. Mm -hmm. It's more than a credit report. Mm -hmm. It's a whole profile of everything you've ever done, what yeah. kind of person you are. Right. We're going there. 1984 on, on, on uh, spades, you know. There's a Netflix series, The Good Place. And they, they do that. The people are all, are all given point values on how good, how good your life has been, basically, how, how well you've lived your life. Yeah. <clears throat> Unless you qualify it to a certain level, you don't get in. Right. <laughs> it's coming that way. Yeah. And, uh, Gee, I mean, this is, uh, it's, uh, what it, it's, it's, it's really happening while we're, we're mm -hmm. not watching it. Right. And, and as the years go by, it'll happen faster and faster. Right. And then we're going to find out that, um, you know, what, what happens in China mm -hmm. happens here. Mm -hmm. And we'll have a social quotient that we won't even know about. The, the, the old Christmas song, right? Uh, Santa Claus is coming, right? He knows when you've been sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows when you've been bad or good. So be good for goodness sake. I mean, that's all coming, <laughs> exactly. coming true, you know, except it's yeah. not Santa who knows. <laughs> yeah. and, and the thing is, I feel that when we do these shows and you start singing, it's about the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Thank true. you, Ethan. It's a sooner. <laughs>